What's up, friends? I'm Jonathan Miller, and welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music, where we help each other become better artists. NMix is officially back with FE304 Break, selling over 127,000 copies in its first day. Today, we're going through the album track by track, and I'll be sharing my thoughts on its genres and influences, productions, track listing, and more to see how this album breaks down and comes together. So give this video a like and subscribe for more K-pop reviews, or drop me a comment letting me know which upcoming K-pop album you'd like to see me review in the future. The top comment might just win. But with that out of the way, here is my album review and genre deconstruction of NMix's brand new album, FE304 Break. Or is it FE304 Break? Chemical compound for black iron oxide break. So yeah, mix it up. We need Egypt FE304 break. FE304 break. Not only is Dash one of NMix's strongest title tracks, it's also a great lead off to the record. It grabs your attention right away and instantly highlights the jazz and blues influences, which in turn highlights the expert blending on this album. Across FE304 Break, it quickly becomes apparent that this is arguably the strongest NMix has ever sounded. From little moments like slowing the beat down while simultaneously singing, I wanna dash, I wanna run it. Dash, I wanna run it, dash, I wanna dash. To the famous NMix change up that this group is known for, NMix made sure not to play around with this comeback. NMix and JYP have always touted that NMix has its own genre called mix pop, which is essentially the jarring changes in tempo, harmonies, and keys somewhere in the song, something that SM Entertainment groups like Espa and Girls' Generation are no stranger to. Beat drop. Don't stop. Let's bring it back to 140. However, NMix has really refined this mix pop style, something that they did really well with Dice. NMix change up, let's go! Big wave, big wave, Piyajima. But I would argue that Dash is even more refined than Dice was. This is an example of hearing public criticism, taking it, owning it, and growing. When Dash switches to its rock-laden bridge, it softly lands back into the familiar harmonic structure of its chant-like chorus to finish out the song. While I personally would have loved a final chorus with Lily's big belts and beautiful ad-libs, I think you can argue that it's not really necessary for this song, and Dash as it is stands on its own. This is not an over-the-top title track, but it still demands your attention. It takes the R&B style that's currently popular in K-pop, grabs hold of the current trend of chant-like choruses, and then builds on both of those things by highlighting NMix's signature, but still keeps the change-up feeling palatable without feeling held back. This, ladies and gentlemen, and your royal highnesses in between, is how sound revolution in K-pop happens. And I love to see it. This is a great one for sure. JYP has made it clear by now that NMix is going to be its group targeting Spanish-speaking communities. As far back as like 2008-2009, JYP has had a vision for K-pop success in those territories, and I kind of appreciate the way he's going about it. Sure, mistakes are going to be made along the way, but some of the members speak Spanish in this group, they don't shy away from its Latin influences, and Soñar is a great example of that. This song is strong enough to be a title track. It's hooky, and like Dash, the NMix changeup is refined. It's less of a knee-jerk and more something that just piques your interest. While I do love the chant-like breakdown about wormholes and Lily's unmistakable high notes, I do kind of wish that the last chorus had that melodic support that Dash has. But that being said, the song is extremely catchy and definitely a standout from the record. And you can stand out with your next music project with DistroKid. DistroKid is one of the top music distribution platforms helping artists like you and me get our music up on places like TikTok, Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, and more. For one small yearly price, you can distribute as much music as you want, and depending on which plan you decide is right for you, you'll also gain access to a wide variety of additional features aimed at helping you promote, manage, and grow your music career. I use DistroKid to distribute my latest single, The Story I've Waited to Tell, so let me show you how you can drop your latest track using DistroKid's upload form. First, pick which stores you want to send your song or EP or album to, mark if it's been previously released or not, pick your release date, and add your record label if you've got one. Select the language your music is in, and then select your genres. Add your album cover according to the specifications provided, add your track titles, and mark if you've got a featured artist or if it's a special version. Pick your your file and add your songwriter info. Mark if your track has explicit lyrics or if it's a radio edit or is instrumental. Pick your preview clip and track price, then choose any extras you want to add and mark all the important checkboxes, then hit upload. So use my special VIP link to save yourself 7% on your first year's membership with DistroKid. Link is in the description. 
Okay, raise your hand if you expected a country song on this album. Now put your hand back down for lying because I can't be the only one who did not expect that. After the gorgeous acapella opening, I was instantly drawn into this song's country pop influence. I'm pretty familiar with country pop music and not gonna lie, for a split second, I was like, wait, are we are we getting end mix featuring Lauren Elena or someone? Because like, now that I think about it, that would be low key pretty lit. I, I kind of want that. But anyway, this song is great. It really balances these darker atmospheres with these like lighter melodic moments. This song is really when Enmix said they've got range and they're here to show it. It doesn't try to use like a southern country accent. It still feels like a K-pop song. The performance video is great. Honestly, I don't really have any complaints. I love the attitude on Boom. The hip hop beats and hooks are really strong on this one. In some parts, it kind of reminds me of PCD's Beep, if anybody knows that reference. And then when the harmonies kick in, it's just so satisfying. Similar to Run For Roses, I love how this song balances like these dark chords and these moments with brighter pop melodies that just create such auditory interest. You guys know that when I listen to an album for the first time, I listen to it top to bottom and don't skip around. And for the album's first B-side without a visual at this point, it certainly stands out. Boom feeds in this amazing bass line around the 210 mark, and then we get a new section of hooks around 229, and it just makes the whole song interesting from start to finish. Again, this is how you take your signature and your concept or whatever it is you're trying to push as an artist, refine it, keep tinkering away until it sounds great, and keep things interesting. Ugh, so good. Passion Fruit is a very on-trend R&B offering that brings to mind songs like Super Shy by New Jeans or La Seraphim's Perfect Night. The that's what's up refrain is super hooky. I find that the whole thing is just a really good reminder at how good Nmix is at blending, which I feel like sometimes has gotten lost in previous title tracks. Sure, some of that blending comes down to just mixing, but you do have to have some natural synergy in order to sound like this on a record. Also in tracklist order, this song breathes in some fresh air. There's no Nmix change up, but that in and of itself is a change up for N Mix and this album, so it kind of balances out. You could argue that like any fourth gen girl group could sing this song, and I think you'd have a point, but I still feel that this is a really good song for N Mix. It shows off their talents in a different way, and I feel gives this group dimension, whereas anybody else, it would just kind of be on brand. I don't know if this song got shopped around to other groups beforehand, but I'm glad it ended up with these girls. XOXO was an instant favorite for me. These R&B offerings should be highlighted more because they really show how much range Nmix actually has. I mean, the first chorus with the members doing that light, breathy sound, and then coupled with Lily's stronger vocals that just cut through creates such an ear-pleasing balance and it, it's just magic. I mean, the mixing on this song through my studio monitors is so incredibly satisfying. Get yourself a good pair of headphones or something and really listen to the song, it's beautiful. The vocals are fantastic from all of the members. I will be keeping this song on repeat for sure. Okay, we just had two softer songs in the track list, and now we've arrived at Break the Wall, which provides a nice lift in energy to round out the record. It's got this strong bass that's perfect for the stadiums that I hope to see and mix perform at one day. It feels epic and like closure, which is why I like it at the end of the track list, but it also doesn't feel like a song that they just tacked on at the end. Some parts actually remind me of one of Becky G's earliest songs, Break a Sweat. <laughs> And I mean that very complimentary. Both songs in a way feel larger than life. And it's that stomp, clap feel that just is magic sometimes. You know, sometimes you just need that little bit of cheese. I mean, not me, because I'm celiac and I can't have cheese, but that's beside the point. It's a nice dose of dance pop and electro pop to keep listeners paying attention from start to finish. FE 304 Break contains quite a few genre influences, as you might expect from a group that is literally designed to fuse as many genres as possible. So here's how I would break it down. 
down. I'd say its umbrella genre is K-pop because of course this is a K-pop album and that's the broadest genre to call it, but obviously we can go deeper. I'd put its subgenre as hip-hop. And Mix incorporates hip-hop and rap in nearly every track to make the songs feel modern. Hip-hop and rap are oftentimes grouped as one genre, but they're actually two distinct genres that can be separated from each other and used in different ways. When the members aren't rapping, hip-hop is still at the core of a lot of these songs. I'd put its niche as electropop. I went back and forth on this, but Nmix likes a lot of darker, edgier pop sounds that still feel commercial and dancey. While electropop might not be the dominating sound on every single song, its influence and reinterpretation can be felt throughout the record. I'd put its micro-niche as R&B as you might expect. The way Nmix uses its R&B influence on this track really supports the growth the group is trying to showcase on this album, giving us a genre-bending K-pop album containing heavy influences of Latin music, rap, and jazz, utilizing a combination of hip-hop and pop song structures in conjunction with electropop-style synthesizers and sonic textures, highlighted by its R&B vocal productions to demonstrate the range, diversity, and strength of its members. This album doesn't have any ballads, but it's not without its softer moments. Lily, our wonderful meme lord, is of course a prominent feature, but it's not solely reliant on her to carry the music. The hooks are strong, it takes their signature mix pop and makes strong improvements on it so that it feels as innovative as we know it's intended to be. I would love to see this record get more attention. So if you're looking for something exciting to challenge the borders of pop music, break down barriers with FE 304 Break by NMix.